All right, gang, set 11.50. Purpose of this video is to introduce you to histograms. Uh, histograms are just a way that we display uh, variables that are quantitative. The purpose of a histogram is not only to display a quantitative variable, but to give us information about distribution shape. So tattoo that one to the brain. It's all about distribution shape. We, we, we have a quantitative variable we use in this, for, for our case at least, we use StackCrunch to, uh, to prepare a, a histogram. And then we classify either as left skewed, right skewed, or bell shaped and symmetric. So um, going to StackCrunch, uh, there's a link there. This is data sets from your textbook. Uh, just click data sets and you get all kinds of pretty cool uh, data sets. I think there's about 50 of them, uh, 46, yeah. <clears throat> I've looked at most of these, uh, you know, some are, are, are quite interesting and um, nice for a class of this nature. The one that I want to look at, uh, and I can't find it, here we go, number 35, card data. So let's click that and uh, uh, you should open up um, a data set. Now, I think this is a great time to pump the brakes and talk about the features of a data set. First of all, <clears throat> when we read left to right, when we read on the lines, we have what are called the cases. So in our case, or in this data set, we have 48 cases, 48 cars on which uh, these uh, certain measurements have been taken. Uh, research actually shows that people who have very little background in statistics, when they have a data set like this, they read left or right. For example, car number 15, for example, uh, is uh, a Toyota, Toyota Camry. It's a mid-sized car. Weight is 3,344 pounds. Length is 192 something. I don't know what that's in. Uh, and uh, we have all this information, all this juicy gossip on the Toyota Camry. Uh, as a statistician with a statistical background, I could care less reading left to right, unless there's some sort of observation, maybe an outlier, uh, an influential observation. I don't read that way. I read up and down. <clears throat> when I look at a data set like this, I look at the variables. The first variable we have is size. The second variable we have is weight. And think about inherent in the word variable. What, what, what's the word there? The core of the uh, of variable, it's called vary, right? So when I look down through here, I expect there to be variation uh, in this measurement. For example, over here on size, uh, we have small, medium, and large and SUV uh, vehicles. What if I just had 48 small? Well, I wouldn't have a variable because there's no variation that variable, quote unquote, would be completely meaningless to me as a, from a statistical perspective if there is not some variation in the measurement. Well, you can look across and you can see that we have uh, uh, on the cars, we have one, two, three, and we can go over here and see 16. So it means we have 15 variables. Actually, I guess probably 14 since I'm not really sure a model would be a variable. <clears throat> Um, so, um, and, uh, you know, all of these, uh, size is a categorical variable. Uh, the measurements are actually presented in categories and weight length and so on are all quantitative because they're presented as numbers. So a histogram only applies for the quantitative variables. Let me repeat that extremely important tattoo it to the brain. Uh, histograms are only applicable for quantitative variables. Now, if I want to get a picture, a uh, graph to represent size in this case, I use a different type of plot, which I'll teach you in a later video. So again, circling back to the beginning of the video, what did I tell you was the primary purpose of creating a histogram? First of all, get a picture of our data. Secondly, classify the distribution shape. So histograms are very, very cumbersome to draw by hand. They are very, very easy to create with StackCrunch. So I'm going to look first of all at weight. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go through some of this stuff 
Uh, that this is really going to be interesting to us at one point, uh, but not just yet. Let's let's just keep it simple uh, in this uh, video, uh, and just hit compute, and we get a picture. So if I hover over these bins, it's kind of interesting. I have one car that weighs from 2,000 to 2,500 pounds. I have eight cars that weigh from 2,500 to 3,000. I can see that the length of the bins going from 2,000 to 2,500 is 500. Uh, just kind of circling back to something we covered in a previous video. But the, the primary thing I want here is what is the distribution shape? Well, I have three choices. I have either it's left skewed, right skewed, or bell-shaped and symmetric. Bell-shaped and symmetric is a distribution. If I draw a line down the center, then to the left and to the right should be very, very, very similar. Uh, this bar and this bar are very similar. These aren't. But more broadly defined, I would define this as a bell-shaped and symmetric distribution. <clears throat> Let's create a histogram for weight. I'm sorry, we just did weight. Let's do for length. Now, by no stretch of the imagination is this distribution bell-shaped and symmetric. Because if I draw a line down the highest bar, the right side looks nothing like the left side. So we would call this a negatively skewed or left-tailed distribution. Now, let me explain why. Uh, gosh, I wish I was scuba diving right now. I took a screenshot of this distribution and just freehanded in uh, a kind of smoothing out of the curve. And you can see this arrow that I'm pointing to is called the tail. Uh, the tail is just the elongated part to where uh, that, that actually creates the skewed uh, uh, characteristic of our distribution. So if this tail goes to the left, it's a left skewed distribution, uh, a left tail distribution. If I flip this and this tail was going to the right, then it's a right tail distribution. So I think at this point, let's uh, pop back up here. Uh, at this point, I think it'd be kind of cool to, uh, since we're learning, let's go through and create a histogram for every single uh, measurement. Except, of course, um, okay, well, that's interesting. I, I didn't realize this. Notice that it doesn't even allow you to create a histogram on size because it's not applicable. So, uh, Let's run through these. So let's just hit compute. And I'll tell you the way that I would classify each of these distributions. Uh, I would classify, let's get this right. So I would classify this as bell-shaped and symmetric, negatively skewed or left skewed, right skewed, and not applicable. Really, uh, a data set like this, uh, we would need a bar plot instead of a histogram. Uh, just ugly, I don't even know how I would, uh, I guess they would have to be right tail, right tail, right tail. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I won't give you one of those in a test. Uh, oh goodness. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know. That's just, that's just ugly. Uh, right tail, I would probably go with uh, bell-shaped and symmetric there, but believe it or not, uh, definitely right tail, definitely right tail, definitely right tail, and that's all of them. So uh, there was only, I think, one left tail, and that was uh, <clears throat> the, uh, I believe it was the length, right? Now, important, 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 put this in your, uh, in your notes. Uh, flashing neon lights around it. Uh, when we deal with a variable that pertains to money, you can almost be guaranteed that the distribution will be positively skewed. The reason being is uh, the outliers are 
with, with uh, uh, financial data, uh, data, data dealing with money, <clears throat> typically fall to the right. Let's say, okay, let's, let's think about this as an example. Let's think about uh, household income. Well, you got a lot of people in this country that make between zero and 50,000. A lot of people, even more between 50,000 and 100,000. And between 100 and 100,000 and 150,000, you have a lot of people. So the bars and the histograms are going to be kind of high. But way out to the right, what's Elon Musk and Bill Gates and Oprah? Win? I mean, what are these people going to do? The bars out there aren't going to be very high, but they're going to be a long way out to the right, forcing that tail to be stretched, creating a right tail or positively skewed uh, distribution. So again, tattoo to the brain, um, uh, variables. I'll tell you what, let's, let's see if we can find something <clears throat> in our data sets that may have to do uh, with money. I'm uh, going to uh, Dow Jones. I wouldn't do it. Uh, should have been prepared for this, but um, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't really see anything. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, commute times. Let's see what uh, what that would look like in different. Uh, um, let's see what uh, I've driven. Uh, I've driven in Boston. I've driven driven in New York. I've driven in L.A. Driven in Chicago. Driven in Dallas. I've never been to uh, any of these three. Uh, let's let's see what it would look like in Chicago. I was just in Chicago uh, for my daughter's one attend school. So. Uh, this would be uh, a positively skewed distribution. Why? <clears throat> because uh, apparently there are uh, 12 people in this sample who uh, uh, commute uh, uh, almost two and a half hours. Uh, some people that commute uh, uh, about two hours. And, um, but the bulk of the people, uh, their commute times are... Um, you know, right around 30 to 40 minutes. So that's kind of an interesting data set. Uh, I wonder what it would look like how it would compare to um, to LA. LA was an absolute beast in which to drive. Um, yeah. All right. Seems like very similar to uh, very similar to um, uh, Chicago. Sorry, guys, got on a, a tangent there. All right. Uh, all right. So let's dive into the questions that I have for you. So let's go to assignment manager and you'll see that there is a uh, lesson one demo for video three. All right, the accompanying data frequency distribution for 45 commute times. Uh, does it appear the graph of the data? Uh, does it appear to be the graph of data from a population with a, a normal distribution? Uh, construct the histogram. So I would. Um, Want to open in Stack Crunch? And I want to create a histogram from variable one, but I need my histogram to look exactly like the options. So notice the options here. The commute times start at zero and they go up by 15s. So I want my uh, bins to start at zero, and I want the width to be equal to 15. So I can compute, and I can see that I get uh, a histogram that looks like this. So what I have to do is go over here and select the one that looks like that. So it uh, looks like to me it's definitely going to be A or C. Uh, I don't know the difference. Um, those look awful close to me. 
So, um, wow, they're making this one really, really, really difficult, aren't they? Oh, okay, I see the difference. Uh, zero, it got sloppy here. This goes from zero to 10, zero to 20. So it's making you, uh, forcing you to make sure that the um, uh, the bins are correct. So uh, clearly A would be the correct answer. Uh, the histogram um, has a longer tail, longer right tail. So the distribution of the data is skewed to the right. And the histogram does not appear to be the graph uh, of data from a population with a normal distribution. All right, next data we have, similar uh, question. Uh, we have a table of uh, frequency distribution. And uh, uh, we want to choose the correct um, histogram. Now notice that we can't link into the data here, which is uh, actually kind of good because it's it's forcing you in this problem to see that uh, the frequency in each bin relates to the height of the bar. So I see that the height of the first bar here is about what a seven. So this can't be the case. The height of the first bar here uh, is about a 26, not the case. And I can, uh, of course, zoom in. I can see this is about 21. So this has to be the histogram that uh, applies. Do the data appear to have a distribution that is uh, approximately normal? Absolutely not. Uh, because it's not symmetric. All right, next question. Frequency distribution, uh, choose the correct. Uh, so again, I'm going to, um, uh, well, I really don't need to create, uh, do I? So uh, I need uh, the counts to be equal to these frequencies. So the first one needs to be two. So I can, uh, I can definitely rule out B because the first count goes up to six. So clearly we can't have B. So I'm saying it's either A or C. So the count below 6.2 is 12. So it looks like this must be the correct answer. All right, does the histogram appear to depict data that have a normal distribution? Uh, yeah, I think it does. Um, uh, because of this reason right here. You know, I've explained all this, you know, in the previous video. Uh, so that's it. Uh, this this problem, I got on a few tangents here, so this uh, video went a little longer than I uh, expected and intended. But I hope this uh, helps in giving you an introduction to uh, histograms, again, which, uh, which do what? They uh, summarize, give us a picture of quantitative uh, data, and they give us an indication of distribution shape. Take care.